You step to watch. <laughs> The final frames of Netflix's Ma Rainey's Black Bottom adapted from two-time Pulitzer Prize winner August Wilson's 1982 play I had a blue so bad. show a dozen or so white men performing in a recording studio. The instrumentalists appear dull and unfeeling, the singer's delivery is dry. The trumpet solo, meant to be the song's standout riff, feels particularly hollow, void of charisma. Yet above them the producer nods, pleased with what he hears. Tell this man who I am, better get him straight, tell this man who we messing with. The scene, which is only a minute long, isn't in the original play. But witnessing this bland rendition of the vibrant song that Levy, Chadwick Boseman's talented trumpeter, has been practically coerced to give away punctuates the heartbreaking saga of black artists exploited by white gatekeepers. Like you did my mama. I heard a wish. We know that this happens Hound Dog is considered an Elvis Presley song, not a Big Mama Thornton song, so this is a chance to actually see that violation play out, after getting so invested in the journey of an incredibly gifted artist, who had such command of that sound, explains the film's director, American theater mainstay George C. Wolfe. It's a very slippery little slope. When does sharing become cultural appropriation become theft? Black art's value and ownership are among the bounty of ideas discussed in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, the play that essentially launched Wilson's career. It grabbed the attention of Lloyd Richards, the director who became the author's mentor, swung open the doors of Broadway, where it ran for 10 months, and kicked off the American Century Cycle, Wilson's collection of 10 plays about the African-American experience, each set in a different decade of the 20th century. All ten are set to be adapted for the screen, an endeavor sought out by the Wilson estate and the playwright's widow, Constanza Romero, and entrusted to Denzel Washington, who shepherded the 2016 film Fences and produced Ma Rainey. I just need me some new shoes. These hurt my feet. Oh, don't you be messing around with no shoes that pinch your feet. August was one of the greatest writers in American history, and we're fortunate and, if I may be so bold audiences are fortunate that we're able to bring his work to those who may never experience all his wisdom in a live performance," Washington says. Of the cycle, Ma Rainey is the only one set outside Wilson's hometown of Pittsburgh. Its 1920s Chicago sets the story amid the Great Migration and the socioeconomic opportunities that northern cities, located beyond the purview of Jim Crow laws, promised black Americans from the rural South. The narrative finds the Mississippi-born Levy hired as a session musician for blues singer Ma Rainey's latest record, though he longs to play his own tunes with his own band. Ann Boseman, in his final screen performance, delivers a performance so heroic, so magnetic, that the viewer never doubts for a second that Levy can make his dream come true. Levy's hope in his own future, and in Sturdivant, the white producer who promises to help get him there, is not blind faith. In a six-minute speech at one point in the film, he interrupts a series of lighthearted jabs and grows serious, relating the story of his mother's rape at the hands of a group of white men when Levy was just eight years old and his father's subsequent quest for vengeance. Levy is starting the story from a place of defiance and then moving to a place of extraordinary intimacy and unbelievable frailty, compared to the laughter and buoyancy that was just in that room, says Wolf. Five dollars, Mr. Study Man. I wants to record them songs, like you say. Well, like I say, they just aren't the kind of songs we're looking for. Mr. Study Man, you asked me to write them songs. Why did you tell me that when I first get them to you? It is a monster of a monologue. My main job was creating a space that would be so safe as to allow Chad to go to his most vulnerable, unguarded place that he possibly could, so there would be nothing to stand between him and the depth of his own emotional skills. About you and your shoe, I said, excuse me. If you can't accept that, then the hell with it. August Wilson is a muscular writer who writes mellifluous, beautiful arias for actors, says actor and playwright Ruben Santiago Hudson, who adopted Wilson's script for the screen. And also, when black men are just hanging out and talkings, it is an art form, with how clever and quick we are. You tell Sturdivant, any more mistakes and I could make my record someplace else. <laughs> August's plays give an arena for that, with the energy and poetry of that banter. After many attempts to record Ma Rainey's song, 
and then to get properly paid for it, Levy follows up with Sturdivant on songs the producer has commissioned from him and confronts a familiar slew of excuses. People in the big city, they want something with some fire to it. Harlem, Detroit, D.C. Okay, Levy, I'll tell you what. I'll give you five dollars a piece for it. I just don't think the people will buy them. They're not the type of songs we're looking for. I don't think they'd sell like Ma's Records Sturdivant says this all too calmly for comfort, as if he's done this back and forth with other songwriters many times before, and then insults Levy with a lowball offer. I don't doubt that really, it's just that, well, I don't think they'd sell like Ma's Records. But I'll take them off your hands for you. It's this enraging encounter that sets off Levy's violent rage over a seemingly trivial incident in the very next scene. Toledo, Glyn Turman, a piano player who at one point in the story reflects on the nature of the African-American collective memory, nah. Shit, you stepped on my shoe. Excuse me there, Levy. accidentally steps on the pricey pair of shoes Levy purchased that morning, still convinced that Sturdivant was poised to help him hit it big. Levy lashes out, drawing a knife and stabbing Toledo, killing him. <laughs> he, he stepped on my shoe, he did. <laughs> It returns the viewer to the central questions of value and ownership, this time with fatal consequences. Ma Rainey isn't about this is what you took from us Wilson told the Times in 1987, but this is so valuable what you've taken from us and discovering that value. The tragedy ends up falling on the character who is the most connected to our African culture, says TheaterWorks Silicon Valley artistic director Tim Bond, who has directed two stagings of Ma Rainey. As Wilson himself famously said, in a world dominated by white culture, the black must be strong enough not only to survive, but to re-establish his own identity and heritage, which flows unbroken from an African fountainhead. In other words, says Bond, we have to talk about what the worth of a black person is in this country. And we cannot assimilate ourselves to the point where our work, our livelihood, our art, and our culture is co-opted by white people. The film's conclusion, with that lifeless version of Levy's exuberant song, exploitatively purchased and recorded by an all-white band in Levy's absence, makes that co-optation palpable. You can bring it, you can dance at any hall. You have people performing a catchy tune, but they have no ownership of the language or the world that it came from, says Wolf, who had to remind the musicians repeatedly to stop themselves from performing fully or bopping along in order to get the scene's tone right. That song is an expression of Levy's ego and coxmanship and his youthful joy of music, says Wolf. It would have had so much personality if he had sung it. See what you done? done? I said, excuse me. But it's just not their song, and they shouldn't be recording it. Whatever you heard before, it was not the blues because no one else sang the blues like Ma Rainey.